Honorable Speaker, I present the budget for 24-25. Introduction. The people of India have reposed their faith in the government led by Honorable Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi and re-elected it for a historic third term under his leadership. We are grateful for their support, faith and trust in our policies. We are determined to ensure that all Indians, regardless of religion, caste, gender and age, make substantial progress in realizing their life goals and aspirations. Global context. The global economy, while performing better than expected, is still in the grip of policy uncertainties. Elevated asset prices, political uncertainties, and shipping disruptions continue to pose significant downside risks for growth and upside risks to inflation. In this context, India's economic growth continues to be the shining exception and will remain so in the years ahead. India's inflation continues to be low, stable and moving towards the 4% target. Co-inflation, that is non-food and non-fuel, currently is 3.1%. Steps are being taken to ensure supplies of perishable goods reach markets adequately. Interim budget. As mentioned in the interim budget, we need to focus on four major castes, namely the Garib, Mahilaya, Yuva, and Anadatta, the poor, women, youth, and the farmer. For Anadatta, we announced higher minimum support prices a month ago for all major crops, delivering on the promise of at least a 50% margin over cost. Pradhan Mantri Garib Kalyan Anna Yojana was extended for five years, benefiting more than 80 crore people. Administrative actions for approval and implementation of various schemes announced in the interim budget are well underway. The required allocations have been made. Budget theme. Turning attention to the full year and beyond in this budget, we particularly focus on employment, skilling, MSMEs and the middle class. I am happy to announce the Prime Minister's package of five schemes and initiatives to facilitate employment, skilling and other opportunities for 4.1 crore youth over a five-year period with a central outlay of 2 lakh crore rupees. I will speak about them shortly while more details may be seen in the annexure. This year, I have made a provision of 1.48 lakh rupees, 1.48 lakh crore rupees for education, employment and skilling. Budget priorities. The people have given a unique opportunity to our government to take the country on the path of strong development and an all-round prosperity. In the interim budget, we promise to present a detailed roadmap for our pursuit of Vikasit Bharat. In line with the strategy set out in the interim budget, this budget envisages sustained efforts on the following nine priorities for generating ample opportunities for all. Number one, productivity and resilience in agriculture. Number two, employment and skilling. Number three, inclusive 
human resource development and social justice. Four, manufacturing and services. Five, urban development. Six, energy security. Seven, infrastructure. Eight, innovation, research and development. And nine, next generation reforms. Subsequent budgets will build on these and add more priorities and actions. A more detailed formulation will be carried out as part of the economic policy framework about which I will speak later in this speech. This budget details some of the specific actions to be initiated in the current year towards fulfillment of these priorities with potential for transformative changes. The budget also covers some of the previously made announcements with intent to strengthen them and step up their implementation for expediting our journey towards the goal of Vikasid Bharat. Priority one, productivity and resilience in agriculture. Transforming agricultural research. Our government will undertake a comprehensive review of the research, agricultural research setup to bring the focus on raising productivity and developing climate resilient varieties. Funding will be provided in challenge mode, including to the private sector. Domain experts, both from the government and outside, will oversee the conduct of such research. Release of new varieties. New 109 high yielding and climate resilient varieties of 32 field and horticultural crops will be released for cultivation by farmers. Natural farming. In the next two years, one crore farmers across the country will be initiated into natural farming, supported by certification and branding. Implementation will be through scientific institutions and willing gram panchayats. 10,000 need-based bio-input resource centers will be established. Missions for pulses and oil seeds. For achieving self-sufficiency in pulses and oil seeds, we will strengthen their production, storage and marketing. As announced in the interim budget, a strategy is being put in place to achieve Atmanirbhartha for oil seeds such as mustard, groundnut, sesame, soybean and sunflower. Vegetable production and supply chains large-scale clusters for vegetable production will be developed closer to major consumption centers. We will promote farmer producer organizations, cooperatives and startups for vegetable supply chains including for collection and storage and marketing. Digital public infrastructure for agriculture Buoyed by the success of the pilot project, our government, in partnership with the states, will facilitate the implementation of the digital public infrastructure in agriculture for coverage of farmers and their lands in three years. During this year, digital crop survey for Karif using the DPI will be taken up in 400 districts. The details of six crore farmers and their lands will be brought into the farmer and land registries. Further, the issuance of Jan Samarth based Kisan credit cards will be enabled in five states. Shrimp production and export. Financial support for setting up a network of nucleus breeding centers for shrimp brood stocks will be provided. Financing for shrimp farming, processing and export will be facilitated through NABARD. National Cooperation Policy. 
our government will bring out a national cooperation policy for systematic, orderly and all-round de development of the cooperative sector, fast-tracking growth of rural economy and generation of employment opportunities on a large scale will be the policy goal. This year, I have made a provision of 1.52 lakh crore rupees for agriculture and allied sectors. Priority two, employment and skilling. Employment linked incentive. Our government will implement following three schemes for employment linked incentive as part of the Prime Minister's package. These will be based on enrollment in the EPFO and focus on recognition of first-time employees and support to employees and employers. Scheme A, first-timers. This scheme will provide one month wage to all persons newly entering the workforce in all formal sectors. Direct benefit transfer of one month salary in three installments to first time employees as registered in the EPFO will be up to 15,000 rupees. The eligibility limit will be a salary of one lakh per month. The scheme is expected to benefit 210 lakh youths. Scheme B, job creation in manufacturing. This scheme will incentivize additional employment in the manufacturing sector linked to the employment of first-time employees. An incentive will be provided at specified scale directly both to the employee and the employer with respect to the EPFO contribution in the first four years of employment. The scheme is expected to benefit 30 lakh youth entering employment and their employers. Scheme C, support to employers. This employer focus scheme will cover additional employment in all sectors. All additional employment within a salary of 1 lakh rupee per month will be counted. The government will reimburse to employers up to 3,000 rupees per month for two years towards the EPFO contribution for each additional employee. The scheme is expected to incentivize additional employment of 50 lakh persons. Participation of women in the workforce. We will facilitate higher participation of women in the workforce through setting up of working women hostels in collaboration with industry and establishing creches. In addition, the partnership will seek to organize women-specific skilling programs and promotion of market access for women SHG enterprises. Skilling program. I'm happy to announce a new centrally sponsored scheme as the fourth scheme under the Prime Minister's package for skilling and collaboration with state governments and industry. 20 lakh youth will be skilled over a five-year period. One thousand industrial training institutes will be upgraded in hub and spoke arrangements with outcome orientation. Course content and design will be aligned to the skill needs of industry and new courses will be introduced for emerging needs. Skilling loans. The model skill loan scheme will be revised 
to facilitate loans up to 7.5 lakh rupees with a guarantee from a government promoted fund this measure is expected to help 25000 students every year education loans for helping our youth who have not been eligible for any benefit under government schemes and policies i am happy to announce a financial support for loans up to 10 lakh rupees for higher education in domestic institutions